Hi, I'm Gabriel, Gabriel Topman, and this is my friend, Andy Ankuma. Excellent. Today we're just going to talk about life growing up for the purpose of encouraging and building genuine, authentic, authenticity, authentic representation of who we are. And the reason why we're doing this video is so that we can allow you to get to know us better. So I'll allow, um, let's, let's start by talking about when we met. Yeah. It was 1997, wasn't it? Mm. Old, that we were young, weren't we? Teenagers. I, I, I feel like an old man when you talk about 1997. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you remember in those days in Camberwell, uh, between Camberwell's position, for those who don't know, it's, a, it's an area in London, southeast London, mm. is positioned between Brixton and Peckham. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah. Yes. And those are the two main places. And then a bit of it is um, a Vauxhall. Oval. Oval. More oval, oval than Vauxhall. Oval, yeah. So we'll say oval. Between Oval, Peckham, Brixton, Soto, Brixton yeah. and Woolworth Road. Woolworth Road. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So right. we're right in the middle of something. Mm. And then there's the other side, which is the Dulwich. Those are the nicer areas. Nicer areas. So, so really, well, there was more to it than just uh, just being between Brixton and Peckham. It was just in the key centre of South East. We were just central across so various places. And the, the interesting part of all this is um, you have your, you know, clique or gangs, if you want to circle. Say. Yeah, you have the Peckham, you have the Brixton, and then the others would want either want to be associated with either Brixton or Peckham. And for us, I don't think we were really interested in any of those. Stuff. We were more into computer games. Yes. So after school, where everyone is going out to go and look for fight, chasing after girls, <laughs> <laughs> as some people would and stuff. I think for us, we were more interested in. Uh, going home and playing computer games to we tire ourselves out and yeah uh, i mean that's that's for us so, at that age anyway yeah we, at we, the early teenage we were we were more of um we kept ourselves away from the trouble you know if that's although we were in the midst of trouble because of where we lived you hear so many stories and stuff and sometimes you wonder wow <laughs> we kind of live in the same place <laughs> although we also firsthand had some experiences of it but it was more of um, because we were not actively involved in some of these people directly associated in terms of friendship, etc. and stuff. We more or less became uh, a target for being potentially bullied. Yeah, we did. Uh, Re in some cases, we were. We were attacked for <laughs> no apparent reason. Remember just that when just that by virtue of, of being found um, closer within the prox neighborhood proximity, yes. you can easily be attacked. For example, I remember when we had, um, I think, there was a time that you and I, we were going somewhere in Campbell, yeah, in Campbell. Somewhere, and then we had these two guys that approached us for us to give them our phones. <laughs> and this guy, always being the guy that wants to be the big brother or the ones that stand up, um, he got punched in his face. Ah, uh, you like <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. That is so cheeky. He, he got lied punched on his face. My face. And then I was like, <laughs> and then he was like, what did we do to you? Oh, we're just going about our business. And truly, I mean, oh, it, it's it's real. These were our experiences. <laughs> and sometimes you realize that growing up and living in this kind of neighborhood, and you know, all of us. And then after we went to secondary school, we all kind of went our different ways. But because we all lived in the same neighborhood, we always kept in touch. Yes. And then college, we went on to university. And I think for us, a lot of us, the experience of university and interacting with various kind of people kind of exposed us out of our little box, Southeast London <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. You meet people, different ideas, 
people with different kind of exposure culturally you have people international people and stuff i met quite a few people that i realized that life is not about just having fun but there's also the spirit uh, 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 that aspect because first year of uni i think we party we partied a lot yes uh, because that was for me because i had a bit of a strict parent it was my first time outside freedom, my parents, freedom. <laughs> so Aww. through that period and all that stuff uh, that then i would say we still kept in touch in some cases i go and visit him although he never came to where i was but yeah i used to go i came to, to birmingham remember when there was that festival in, Ber in birmingham yeah, yeah. acs acs yes yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, I, I think i stayed in in your in your place overnight i'm not sure if i stayed overnight i'm not sure if you stayed but i think you i was stayed. there the next there morning that's for sure people, yeah you, there, was, there were a whole group of people that came and I, we went different places of Birmingham. Because you were sharing a house with Somewhere, some yeah. people that I know very well, and uh, and uh, we 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 had we we had a great time, didn't mm. we? Mm. I remember that time. No, I didn't stay over at yours. We just I just found myself in your house because we came to change mm. in your house, didn't we? Yeah, you did. You did. But I think the the, the whole essence of talking about this is the fact that um, we lived in a place that's their experiences was nothing to write home about. I mean, despite the fact that it was speak, quote unquote, street, um, strictly speaking, that means that it makes you very streetwise, et cetera, and stuff. But the truth of the matter is, streetwise doesn't pay bills. <laughs> but we can say that it definitely toughened me up. Yeah, yeah it toughened us up, but the streetwise, <laughs> and that doesn't take you, doesn't make you become an entrepreneur, but how like, how like my friend here has, and I've also learned a lot from him. Um, but what it definitely did for us to toughen and also never give up, yes. you understand? I think at some point we were all determined that we will not live in that environment. We all want a better life for ourselves. Life, life as we know it, has to be and must be more than South London, especially mm. from where we lived. Yes. Well, let's be fair. We weren't that bad worse off, well, were we? We we had a two-bedroom flat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Old council. Yeah. Um, um, house, and uh, so usually what happens with council um, environment yeah. is that some some people keep their head down, go to work, and some parents don't pay attention to their kids, and some of these kids a, happen to have become very rotten gang prone people we knew people that got killed we knew people that were seriously in injured we knew people that were involved in gang activities and stuff but the truth of the matter is for us maybe because of the kind of parents we had we were never interested in getting involved in any of those stuff you know yes. thank god um, none of us were interested in gun banging etc some of these things at the time being young and naive it looked attractive but we always knew that, look, some of these things, as, as, as being naive as it is, it can end your life. Yes. It can, it can seriously end your life. And we knew that, look, we were very ambitious, even though we were doing not much at that time, because obviously we were quite young and we we're just in secondary school. And, you know, but we always had the vision, the idea that, look, one day we will make something of ourselves. And thankfully, we live in a country that, you know, the opportunities are there the opportunities are there it's not easy but it's a case of the, the, the whole thing is about determination and this guy here really really opened a lot of uh, a lot of us our eyes up and as a result you know um, he's become successful that has also robbed to us we have also um, looked at expanding that and helping other people become successful because look the story is never ended where until your next friend your next people that is around you is also becoming successful because look there is nothing like oh i live i have a, a pair of network of friends and i'm the richest among them the yes. same places that those people can't afford to go they can't even afford decent holiday they can't even afford a decent place to live and the cycle of living in an environment where their kids are always exposed to danger etc our story 
you know, at a very young age, should not carry on to the next generation. You know, it has to end somewhere. And that's where the whole essence of this is. And, you know, my lovely friend here, he's on a mission to change that story. He's on a mission to change that narrative. Where, you. and, uh, you know, impacting people's life in a very positive way, having a shift in mindset, and more importantly, people, effort, and activities begins to build and breed results where it's not just that, okay, this person did this for me, but I learned, copied, followed, and I'm also beginning, I'm on, on my way to also seeing my story change. Awesome. Thank you very much. Now, let's talk about the, the reality check of what it takes for changing that story. What do you think about my result-oriented attitude? How, on a scale of 1 to 10, by the way, feel free to score me low if you want to, I don't mind. Um, how easy, <laughs> yeah? Being, 10 being, oh, super easy, yeah. and 2 being, or 3 or 4, being not too easy. Um, score from 1 to 10, how easy it is to deal with me when it comes to doing things with to with a with a with a with a sense of commitment quality and being felt i think your approach you know you have a very methodical approach so for example you start with asking what 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 do you what what are your goals in life just like any other uh, person that has your interest or that wants to know what where your current situation where you want to go where do you picture yourself maybe in the three to five years in the next 10 years how do you want to see your children you know what life what legacy do you kind of want to live for your children and also uh, beyond that whatever you've created now can you confidently say your grandchildren will also come and benefit from that because look let's be honest an example being the royals okay they will never be poor no generation within the royal since they started royalness Will be poor but the question is you can also have a chunk of that kind of story to your um, generation or your um, children i mean your children's children that will come in the future they will see that their grandparent or their grandfather was a great man mm -hmm. and he has laid that foundation for them to come and also benefit and enjoy you understand your struggles now should be that your grandchildren don't also come and follow that same struggle but rather you've laid a foundation for them to what catapult to, to take them to the next level and so for me i think that's one of the things that i took from some of your things your teaching or should i say um some of the things that you helped us during our coaching or the sessions that we have with you to really really reorient our way of thinking because wealth there is what we we understood was there is riches and there's wealth yes for example footballers are rich they are not wealthy they can because be wealthy they can be however Everyone can be however wealthy. we all have heard of stories of for example with all the millions and monies that they were earning the moment they stop playing football the story changes and that's what that that's the difference between them being rich and them being wealthy so for example a play i don't want to mention specifically names but you can see that there are some footballers that they are next four to five generations would never know what poverty is regardless because what they have gone about investing smartly one one player that i heard about that was an inspiration robbie savage after he retired he had so many properties and uh, fortunately for me, it was being managed by a property, property company. He doesn't even know where some of the properties are. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean... All he, all he gets to do is allow that trusted agent to pay him mm. for the property, property that he has chosen to invest in. Yeah. They pay him rent for that. And to be honest, he's saying that he is equally 
if not more comfortable than when he was playing football because of the investment that he made. Excellent. So passive income. Yeah. He because has he invested his... in property. Yeah. So basically, as Andy has just explained, the fact is it doesn't matter how good we think we are in our career, in our business. If we're making a lot of money and we've made significant chunk of money and we don't put it in property, freehold property, or have a strategy for making that money work, even if we can't afford a brand new one, even if we had to buy a scrap one mm. and turn it around. Yeah. You know, would you believe this house was a scrap house? Mm. It was a scrap house. Like, you know, and uh, we turned it around into a packaging, into a venue mm. that we can use yeah. for the purpose of reaching out to the world in the way that we feel comfortable with as I feel comfortable with. And, you know, another thing is, um, I think sometimes when we think about, um, and sorry we're going a lot more into property because obviously that's one of the key things that has been the transformation in our journey. And more so probably this guy because obviously he's, he's a little bit ahead of us. But for us, I think um, when we thought of property, we thought, we can never get on board. I mean, because we don't have that kind of money, you know, we are ordinary working people earning a living, but of course, even to come up with a deposit and stuff. And then this guy here told us that, nope, nope, money should never be a barrier. There are strategies in acquiring property without even having the kind of money that we've always been led to believe that's what you need to even start. There is ways and means of acquiring the strategies that's you know various approaches in acquiring uh, property without ha necessarily having the huge sums of money that most people think they do and also where it comes to location sometimes you, the best place to acquire property is not necessarily where you live you know you may have to um, look at if somewhere far away as a way of just getting your foot in and then you begin it catapults you to various investment opportunities as a result of just one move excellent so let me take that opportunity to bless you with a major point that i want you to take from what handy has just said comfort zone what is effectively just told you is that we started from nothing in a council flat i shared my room with four siblings i think you also have three right yeah so you shared a room with your three mm -hmm. siblings mm -hmm. didn't you and when we when we stepped out of our house we dealt with um criminals that were willing to confront and assault you for no reason <laughs> and um being easily misunderstood i got into fights as he said and myself some scars and bumps from way back then and yet if I was willing to settle for that reality and live in the past and choose not to look forward and yeah. leave my comfort zone yeah. the type of results that my friend Andy would respect and appreciate yeah. would not have manifested so what I want you to take from this is comfort zone. Yes, it's true that it can be quite dangerous and it's, the anxiety is great. Absolutely, it is without a doubt. But the alternative is not getting a better return on the money that you've earned. Not making that loan or that inheritance money or that retirement fund go the long way for you and your family. Now, there are other things around property that I could talk about, but I don't want to go on and on and on and turn this into a, a, uh, a, a lecture. We wanted to keep this as authentic, natural conversation yeah. where we are blessing people. Yeah, because, I mean, we're talking about lives, our experiences, how we got into um, 
this aspect of being an entrepreneur i mean uh, like i said i mean i'm personally i'm from a digital marketing background um online advertising etc where i consult um i help clients advertise you know etc but i think property is not something i thought of immediately until this guy actually came along and started sharing some real insights and yeah i said to myself well i mean property is a lot of money to get you saw your teeth into and thankfully um he had a plan a blueprint on how to get your foot in without having to shelve a whole lot of money but being financially disciplined taking a few you know I mean, drastic decisions financial decisions restructuring your finances etc your spend your outgoings etc and stuff just so that you can be able to get one foot in and then the rest is history because once you get your your, your foot in you begin to realize the possibilities in acquiring more and building a portfolio absolutely and, uh, thank you andy mm -hmm. and now that we spoke about financial sacrifices and drastic mm -hmm. i need to ask you when you look at my fridge is it, not, <laughs> is it full with food and juice and have i gained a lot of weight <laughs> was that was i was i a, a skinny or a, or a relatively bigger guy when you knew me oh you're a very very slim guy <laughs> <laughs> Like, it looks like look, looking at your shape now, it looks like you're quite there's a lot of comfortableness in different areas. Like. <laughs> I still like the whole thing, isn't it? No, it's also because we're getting older, because obviously, it's true. Um, Processing about, it less, yeah. But I mean, look, when you talk about making some drastic decisions, financials and stuff, it doesn't mean that you're starving or anything, it's just that changing a certain habits, you know, not always eating out, cutting out a lot of things and stuff. Because look. The biggest challenge in getting onto any property ladder is cutting, realizing that even the old twenty pounds here, thirty pounds here, forty pounds here, fifty pounds here, you realize that by the end of the month, easily five hundred, six hundred pounds, and that can go a long way in contributing to your um, investment. Yes, you, you know these little, little, little things that you don't really take serious. And so when Gabriel started pointing these things, it was to begin with, it was very uncomfortable for some of us. But as obviously he has tried and tested it and it's working for him. So we had the evidence that, okay, what he's teaching us is working for him. So obviously he knows something that we don't. And so once he came and started telling us about some financial discipline and cutting out on impulse buying, habitual buying and what something called emotional buying you know it's like you see something window shopping you didn't plan on buying before you know you have about three you spend three two hundred three hundred pounds worth of thing because you have a credit card and all these things and stuff but the truth is even credit card can be used to um what's it in, in a very very smart way to contribute into investing in aspect of this because it's about knowing the system and le and was it, um, learning to play the system to your advantage absolutely that said i'll tell you what i did that that was drastic when my first daughter was born though i was on benefit system in the uk um and applying for jobs actually i wasn't i was an entrepreneur and they don't like entrepreneurs and yet i still was entitled but they weren't given it because they had a problem with people trying so that's one other topic but what i did that was drastic mm. is did you know that i would wake up as early as 4 a.m mm -hmm. study 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 the books i paid a thousand pounds for like a folder like this <laughs> called a to z of internet marketing yeah yeah no, not a thousand. It was no. That's this. That's wrong information. I apologize. It was ninety nine pounds. Mm. Yeah, for a folder like this. Mm. When I read it, it showed me all the blueprints of that um, Coral Rudo, the of the Internet Marketing Center. Yeah, was using. They had a website called MarketingTips.com back then. 
I was you didn't know I was studying those things after graduating uni. But that's why I buried myself in around looking after my daughter. And uh, and yes, I I ate once a day, of course, um, and I barely ate anything other than chicken and chips and kebab. <laughs> um, three pounds was the budget. But my daughter obviously had to be looked after. She was fed as properly as any child can be. Um, but ultimately, when I got insurance money after an accident, instead of looking after myself, upgrading and buying another car, I added it to the money I've been saving by eating one meal a day. And I invested $12,000 in internet marketing A to Z. I paid a person who wrote the manual mm. to coach me through the A to Z of internet marketing. Okay. Where they taught me how to write sales copy and put SEO inside it. Mm. How to advertise on Google search and other places. How to analyze data, do use Google Analytics. And ultimately, that was the main core of it. Obviously, they taught me how to do research, benchmark with the competition. Mm. And after that, I still had to earn that knowledge, practice it, practice it, practice it. And that evolves into web design skills and, and, and more experience as I, as I try to transfer mm -hmm. the knowledge from one industry mm -hmm to the next. Okay. So because I tried it on different industries, I then had to fulfill the order that I got as a result of that marketing activity. Okay. So effectively, the investment in myself was my time and money. Time and money, okay. So, and I did it, I did what I had to do and I did it with the most top rated most reliable people that I could find at that time. Those last, those were the key. Then when obviously uh, we needed to do some transformation and reposition because there was so much uncertainty going on, I realized it was no longer about me because I was now a highly skilled person. So what I needed to do was invest in property because now it was no longer about me being able to serve my family because I was already serving them. I was already creating jobs, helping other people move so, along. So basically you had like a few, you, you started a few businesses. Yes. And each of these businesses were recruiting people and stuff. But you, you felt like there was a little bit more beyond some of these businesses because you can't put too many of your, I'm sorry, you can't put um, your eggs in one basket because maybe perhaps well, I'm guessing all of these companies were within online the online space no actually I have a me I had I still have transport business mm -hmm. one moves moving people okay uh, removals man and van moving and storage services yeah then there's the mini boss business okay and then there's the web design okay and consulting business all right so those were the three core of my businesses so the property and then the coaching mm -hmm. was something that that i got into and i started before um covid happened and a lot changed and we we needed to figure out we didn't know how long that was going to last for okay, did we of course yeah so in that uncertainty i thought to myself right even if the going gets tough mm -hmm. i still have an obligation to make sure everybody wins my daughter had to win, my children had to win, my, my, the, the loan that we, I, we took in order to, to survive the storm because mm. businesses just went quiet. Nothing yeah. was moving for oh, us yeah. as much, or I didn't feel comfortable really mm. with, um, with, with dealing with people. Mm. So During the COVID time. During the COVID time. But we still needed to give certainty to the bank. So it was really obvious that we needed a project that was appropriate for that season. Is that how you got into the property? That's, That's really the truth about why I got into it. And the figuring it out as we go along, along the way, that was the hard part. Because the alternative 
was to do it myself. I mean, I did do it myself, but the alternative was to pay out all my money or lose all my money, but somehow I didn't. I, 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 the initially, the first investment was more expensive, obviously, okay. because that's how it is in the first lessons. People play games, mess you around, make a lot of mistakes, but we learned from those journeys. Okay. And it's those pain points, yeah. those journeys that make, that, that qualifies us to assist other people so that they can avoid the headache. In my opinion, the investment is the risk. Taking that risk mm -hmm. and making it work so that I can then look after other people mm. knowing what's at stake if things don't get done. Okay. Because no more human beings without the experience who have not felt the pain of not getting things done. Sure. I get you. Of potentially wasting six figures. Mm. You know, they, they won't take they won't appreciate the critical path and the importance of how they deal with particular situation. Mm -hmm. They won't know when to fight. Mm -hmm. They won't know when to beg. And they won't know when to just persist. Okay. What do you think about so, that? I, I guess, you know, your, your story, I mean, in terms of what you're telling me, is, is also a journey. Yes. Because obviously the first experience a lot of mistakes were being made, but also those mistakes were also lessons. Yes. Okay. So the key thing here is, you know, understanding some of the ins and outs of the property market. Um I'm guessing you had a few people advising you along the way. No. Okay, so yours was basically you were Complete in, green. I was virgin. only. <laughs> you're literally virgin, and then you're just going along. And I just as you make in. mistakes, you go along. So yeah, you, I'm sure you had a bumpy ride, but I guess those are the mistakes that you took the risk. Yes. Like you were saying, you're either going to lose your money, etc. But I guess your the bigger picture was that look, my family has to move away from where I grew up, the environment, etc. And stuff because I want a better life for your family. In fairness, yeah. I already moved my family out of that. Yeah. First, I moved them to the nice part of Canberra, Gypsy Hill, Crystal Palace. Okay. And we were enjoying that place. It was totally beautiful. But it was a flat, mm. two-bedroom flat. Yeah. And As I wanted my daughter. Increasing. And I wanted my daughter to. My daughter was starting to crawl. Crow. And I thought to myself, there's no way. I'm gonna I'm gonna let my daughter not have a twenty square foot twenty um foot long space mm. to crawl on and to run around. Mm. And people looked at me like, "What's your problem? Why can't you just be content with a flat in Crystal Palace, low crime area, posh it's just, area?" It's just being ambitious and wanting something better than where for my are. kids. Yeah, of course. So I moved them to East London mm -hmm. to a grand space. Okay. But ultimately, when I moved them to that big, grander space and I renovated it, mm. that is one key thing to know. I renovated a house that was a private landlord's house mm -hmm. to a very good standard. That house was never been in as good situation, circumstances okay. ever. It was done to a very high standard. Mm. And I was so proud of myself <laughs> as a father. So what made you move then? To move to East London? No, to like actually move from East London. The alternative was paying out over two thousand pounds a month on on the rent. On the rent. Whilst that can buy a property somewhere else as yes. a mortgage. So I wanted to offer financial freedom of and options for my children. Sure. So the goalpost changed okay. from oh i I can choose to stay here mm. in the rat race. Okay. And there's uncertainties. Oh sure. Like we don't know. We didn't know. Two years. I've been there before. I failed. I know what it's like to go from 70 grand a year to write down to ten thousand pounds 
a year <laughs> and stay down and the expenses are the same i can imagine i can imagine i mean for us we are so grateful to you because obviously all these experiences and issues that you had is what has also taught you and you have transferred that knowledge to us so that we don't make that kind of mistakes and that's a very very commendable selfless act Thank you. on your side that has also led to our benefit because obviously we have also learned from you um, not to say that we are completely 100% um, error free however we have minimized our errors and probably saved our uh, us some headaches financially and also some decisions that we have made but it's also built on the fact that you made those mistakes and those that means that your mistake doesn't necessarily have to be our mistake exactly so, that's yeah. actually a joy i want people to avoid why should you suffer the same pain as me because if it happens to you then it means that i am relieving the same mistakes however the good news is this if you're going through it and i'm relieving it the joy of coming through it faster and even better yeah yeah because this time you, you can with experience there's a lot you can do at speed with less hiccups obviously <laughs> when you know speed, yeah <laughs> when you have someone backing you and giving you the tips and the um, insights in terms of um do this don't do this consider this you know be thorough research into this etc and all these things and stuff and these these are the things that goes a long way in avoiding a lot of the mistakes that the novice that is coming onto the property or going to any kind of investment um, doesn't consider they quickly um, either invest too too much quickly within a short space of time or um, they don't do enough in terms of their checks or research or being thorough etc and stuff so yeah generally i think um Gabriel we I mean I'm so appreciate your view so much that we have gained from you not just me but a few others you know and he doesn't like blowing a slow trumpet but there's a lot of people that lives has been impacted um by Gabriel one way or the other some directly and indirectly through you know people that he's met people that he's advised people that he has really really created some opportunities for that has also led to them you know taking themselves to the next level not just in property but just in general business as well so yeah it's it's, it's been a fantastic time thank you um, and we are all on a journey we're still young thankfully there's so much to live for and there's so much investment opportunities and decisions to be made i'm sure in the years to come and Hopefully, we can also begin to take this and impact our generation, the younger people that are also coming up. Because look, the truth of the matter is, we didn't have the platform because obviously our parents came um, from various parts of the world to settle here. They had to, in most cases, take menial jobs. They yes. were never at home because they have to make ends meet. And um, they were not top earners, so they couldn't afford some of the things properties some mortgages etc so where we were in a position to also change that narrative we took we we've you know we may we haven't arrived but we definitely are not in the same place we used to be you know and yeah um, long may it carry on um, amen thanks for having me today it's a pleasure yeah, thank sure you for i think we should do part two of this yes i agree yeah. i agree so there's so much to talk about so much to share and i hope that for you out there Please subscribe to this page. There's so much that we have to share. And definitely we um, we look into um, do put more content out there that inspires and us and you know um, um, become some form of inspiration for people to see that look people like us that didn't have nothing to begin with, it's still possible for us. Absolutely. So yeah. Um, so keep we'll keep it coming but awesome. more importantly please subscribe to our youtube um pay channel and whenever we put a content out you know you will be one of the first people to know and that we, we we're still very um much at the early stage of uh, of the channel and definitely there's more to come from us so watch this space thank you thank you very much andy All right. you've been listening to andy um, a marketing digital marketing expert he knows what's working in the digital marketing space
Probably, maybe that's also a topic that we want. We ought to talk absolutely, about. yeah. Because I'm into digital marketing myself, even though I'm not specialized, I'm more focused on the creative and solid foundation laying part of it. Without people like Andy, there's no continuity. You see, now we will talk later in the future about collaboration. We'll talk about the benefits of collaboration. Yeah. The, sp the benefit of being specialized in an area where you can look after people properly in line with your strengths mm. and your own strategic position. So if you, if you subscribe, you'll be able to discover some of these valuable lessons, strategic positioning, and how that would transform your life into true financial freedom. Six figure wealth that is sustainable and will grow into seven figures into eight figures as long as god wills it but remember it's not about the figures it's about cash flow it's about peace of mind just like andy said in a previous video that if you subscribe your you can go and watch it he spoke about um he spoke about um, generational wealth mm. and he, he spoke about put uh, money, making money. You know, these things are the things that you'll be able to discover and it all boils down to network, quality of your network. And we'll be able to go into more details about the quality of circle. Remember, when we grew up in Camberwell, we were, we were effectively... Um, we had no choice. Yeah. We were in a circumstance, we were just kids. Yeah. But because of personal development, we were able to offer much more to our family. So there's a lot of other things to learn about. Wow. And there's strategic positioning, which I've mentioned. Yeah. We spoke, I spoke about cash flow so. and, and, and working together. Yeah. So if you need any help with digital marketing, you can speak to him and he will surely help you. He's fantastic. Okay. Drop us yeah. a message in the comment and um, let us also know what you feel about the kind of content we're putting out there because that also encourages us to see that, yeah, we are doing something that is actually helping people, um, you know, impacting people. That I think for us, that's, that's, that's our joy in seeing that, look, people are taking our videos seriously. People are seeing what we're putting out there and also impacting it it you may want to join us in some of the things we're doing you might not but the main thing is for us for this to impact you and inspire you to really take some steps into changing your future amen amen right. thanks for All watching right, thanks. bye for now bye